The Devil's Hand is a supernatural film released in 1961, one of the first releases from Crown International Pictures. Some folks call it a horror film, but this movie isn't trying that hard for that audience. This film is structured like a cautionary film. Movies spotlighting temptations, as well as the perils of chasing them. Directed by William J. Hole, production on the film actually completed in 1959, but the original producers struggled to get it in movie theaters. As it turned out, this movie was tailor-made for a different audience. The story begins with Rick who, while restlessly wandering the city streets at night, sees a doll in a shop window that's a spitting image of his dream girl, as in the girl that invades his head every night. Things get stranger when he and his fiance enter the shop the next day. The shop owner says that Rick's the one who commissioned the dream doll, while that doll on the shelf that looks just like his fiance is totally somebody else. Shortly after that, the fiance is suddenly struck ill, and has to go to the hospital. Rick meets the dream doll woman, and that encounter draws him into the orbit of a devil-worshipping cult who want Rick to give up his soul. The devil-worshipping cult in this film predates the leather-clad Satanism that we see in modern times. This version of devil worship looks like a mix of voodoo rituals and corporate-mandated team building. They don't worship Satan either. They're followers of an evil deity named Gamba, an invention for the movie. For all the exposition, we learn very little about the Gamba cult's ultimate purpose, how they select their recruits, what they want with Rick's soul, or how the voodoo dolls work. The story is actually about Rick coming face to face with temptation, being lured to it, and ultimately rejecting it. But he's not that interesting, not even that virtuous, and he doesn't seem to have learned a thing at the end of the movie. No, the reason to watch this movie is Bianca, the witch that recruits Tony, the devil's hand of the title. She spends most of the film luminous and negligee, which is what stands in for sex and nudity in this film. Bianca has the role of embodying temptation in an extremely chaste film, and she kind of pulls it off. The other reason for watching this film is the shopkeeper slash high priest Francis, played by Neil Hamilton. His performance is even more intriguing when compared to his most iconic role as Commissioner Gordon on the 60s Batman TV series. Although that was years to come, Hamilton looks like he just stepped out of Gotham City and he speaks with just enough mischief to suggest he's enjoying the change. TV, in fact, turned out to be a better home for the devil's hand than drive-in screens. The movie already looks and feels like a knockoff episode of The Twilight Zone, which debuted the same year this movie went in production. It took two years for this movie to get a big screen premiere, but sold to television just one year after that by a subsidiary of Desilu, Lucille Ball's production company. This is one of the early success stories for the film's distributor, Crown International Pictures, and we'll talk about them in another episode. TV was good for many of the film's creators as well. William J. Hole was already a TV veteran throughout the prior decade. He'd continue in the TV industry throughout the 60s and 70s, most notably as a director and associate producer for the soap opera Peyton Place. Meredith Nicholson had primarily worked the camera for B-movies in the 50s. By the time The Devil's Hand premiered, he was director of photography for the TV series The New Breed. By the end of the 60s, he'd employ a more dynamic visual style used in such shows as Get Smart, Batman, and Mork and Mindy. Bianca was played by Linda Christian. She was a Hollywood starlet in the 40s. She was also the first Bond girl in a 1954 TV adaptation of Casino Royale. She was no stranger to the tabloids, having married and divorced Hollywood star Tyrone Power, she was photographed a month after the divorce, kissing pro racer Alfonso de Portago, just before the race that would end his life. Years later, she would be briefly married to Edmund Purdom. Hello, Edmund. And another twist to this film's casting. The girlfriend in the love triangle is being portrayed by Linda Christian's sister, Ariadne Welter. She had such a bad experience making The Devil's Hand that she swore she would never make a movie in the United States again. She returned to her native Mexico 
and would appear in movies and television for the next four decades. The Devil's Hand is not a horror movie. It's not even a scary movie. It is, however, a very nostalgic movie. Whether you enjoy this kind of film sincerely or ironically, it's a prime example of a particular era in Hollywood, a more innocent time when dangers were yet unseen.